Tonight on Cougar News, The Right to Die, we talked to one Santa Clarita woman who was at the center of the national debate. Plus, after several brutal attacks on dogs in the Antelope Valley, police and owners are searching for answers. And are COC students getting enough sleep? Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Georgia Rios. And I'm Sammy Gebers. Here's the latest from the Cougar News room. Oregon, Washington, and Vermont are states that have death with dignity laws. Laws that allow mentally competent and terminally ill adults to receive medication to aid in their death. Now California is close to having a death with dignity law of its own. And one local woman has found herself at the forefront of the fight. Oh, you know Mama's happy, and you know what else has Mama been doing? Crying. Valencia resident Christy O'Donnell has good days and bad days, and for her, last Wednesday was a good day. That's because the California State Assembly passed the End of Life Options Act, ABX2-15, by a vote of 43 to 34. Christy suffers from terminal metastasized lung cancer and has been fighting to get the End of Life Options Act passed in California since she was diagnosed last year. It has been one year and almost exactly three months since I've been diagnosed. It was two days after we closed escrow on our house here in Valencia, and it was also um, just two days after my daughter's 20th birthday party. Christy is a single mother, a former lawyer, and a former LAPD sergeant, and has lived her whole life accepting and overcoming challenges. I've chosen to take the illness that I've been given and try to do something positive for others. I don't have much time left, but the little time that I have left, I can choose to do something good for others. She finds comfort in her daughter Bailey, and also in Bailey's best friend Vicky, who lives at home with both of them. We like make breakfast together, have coffee, we'll watch 80s movies for her choice, and I say if I like them, if I don't. And then um, we'll go painting sometimes to the swap meet, stuff like that. Christy's not out to leave behind a legacy, but she does hope that her story will help destigmatize the topic of death. You should be talking about what is it going to be like when my parents die? What is it going to be like when I die? They're not issues that are easy to talk about, but you should be talking about them so openly as part of your dinner conversation that when it comes time for your death, you're not shocked by it. Since speaking with Christy on Wednesday, the bill has gone on to pass through the California State Senate and now moves to Governor Brown's desk. Christy is hopeful that he will sign the bill into law, but she has accepted the fact that he could veto it. I have always believed that this law will be passed in California. It is my hope that it will be passed in my lifetime. Uh, but if it's not, I know it will be passed, and I know when my daughter will be alive to see it. I know that with 100% certainty. For Cougar News, I'm Nick Faverka. A ninth dog was found with chemical burns on its body in the high desert. Kimberly Pressler has the full story. This is Taco, a three-year-old Chihuahua mix that was rescued this weekend in Apple Valley, where he had been walking around for at least a week with these burns on his back. His wounds match those found on at least eight other dogs in the Antelope Valley and Kern County. Rescuers believe somebody is torturing the animals by pouring caustic chemicals down their backs. A golden retriever named Fergus was the first known victim discovered in Lancaster in August. Since then, six pit bulls and a cavalier King Charles Spaniel have been brutalized. Two of the dogs were so badly burned they were humanely euthanized. Kathy Miller, the president of Doggy Smiles Rescue, who is now caring for and funding Taco's treatments, told me today via Facebook, He had surgery on Sunday to remove dry skin and to soften the remaining skin. He is still in a lot of pain and is receiving pain management as well as IV fluids and antibiotics. Taco is being treated at the Pets R Us Animal Hospital that you see here behind me, and he'll be here for the next few weeks. Now, there is a $50,000 reward for the capture and conviction of the person or people responsible for this act. So if you have any information, you are urged to call the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. 
From Palmdale for Cougar News, I'm Kimberly Pressler. Monday night, a woman was found lying in the northbound lanes of Orchard Village. The woman, described in her 60s, was pronounced dead at the scene. Deputies are investigating her death as a hit and run. Hours earlier, a young man was struck and killed on the corner of Wildwind and White's Canyon. These two incidents are reminders of the precautionary measures pedestrians must demonstrate to prevent disaster from occurring on the street. Residents are advised to follow common traffic laws, such as walking safely on the sidewalk or facing traffic if there is none provided. Don't assume vehicles will stop. Make eye contact with the driver. Don't just look at the vehicle. And refrain from wearing headphones or talking on a cell phone while crossing the street. Utilizing these simple tips can be the difference between life and death. Local runners are remembering a New Hall woman who was found dead in her car six days ago in Happy Valley. The body of 22-year-old Jasmine Gonzalez was found inside a parked car in the 22400 block of Shadeland Avenue on Thursday afternoon. Homicide detectives with the LA County Sheriff's Department don't suspect foul play. Gonzalez was an avid runner and a week from the Saturday, the Santa Clarita Track Club is inviting anyone to be a part of the Be The Light 5K. The race begins at 7 p.m. at West Creek Park in Valencia. With election season right around the corner, no one brings better entertainment to rallies and debates than Donald Trump. Andrew Gold has more on the aspiring president and his surprising popularity. So, just to sum up, I would do various things very quickly. I would repeal and replace the big lie Obamacare. We all know Donald Trump, the billionaire, the real estate developer, even the reality TV star. But the presidential candidate? Rallying many Americans behind one issue, immigration, Trump has skyrocketed to the top of Republican polls. With no prior political experience to speak of, one may wonder, what makes Donald Trump so appealing? His popularity, his kind of top-down corporate mentality of trying to express to people that, you know, if you just give him the power and give him the job, he can fix the system. And um, that's not unusual in American politics. A lot of voters like to put their kind of trust and faith and hopes into someone that they think is bigger than the system. With all the support he has gained within the last few months, will Donald Trump end up with the Republican nomination? He has absolutely no chance. No, the, the GOP knows it. Okay. They made him, it's a jo it was a joke to them at first, and then now they're using him because people are paying attention because he says outlandish things constantly. And it makes headlines. Regardless if you take the headlines seriously or not, they're there. They're all over CNN, MSNBC, NPR even covers it. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. Regardless of whether or not Donald Trump becomes a player in next year's election, is yet to be determined, but we do know one thing for sure. It'll be an entertaining ride. For Cougar News, I'm Andrew Gold. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS. So Aaron, it seems like there's been a lot of talk about earthquakes and flash floods. Could you tell us what's been happening? I'd love to tell you a little bit more about that. Today, Chile was rocked by a massive 8.3 earthquake. Three people are dead and dozens are more injured. The epicenter was 145 miles northwest of Santiago. There have been two aftershocks. The Pacific Tsunami Warn Center had issued an immediate tsunami warning for much of the coast in Chile and Peru, and even an advisory as far as North Los Angeles. USGS officials say, the, say to expect to, to see considerable damage. When was the last time you got in trouble for telling the time? Well, on Monday, freshman high school student Ahmad Mohammed bought a digital clock that he invented out of a pencil case and brought it to school. Little did he know that by the end of the day, he would find himself in handcuffs. The homemade clock altered school personnel when the timer went off in class. He was immediately suspended. However, not everyone was alarmed. Many big names are supporting Ahmad, including President Obama, who tweeted, cool clock Ahmad, want to bring it to the White House? Since then, he has returned to school. And over the last several days, the state of Utah has been with a string of flash floods. Several hundred volunteers have given their time to help with the recovery effort. Unfortunately, 18 people have died and two others are presumed missing. Rescue efforts are on their way. The forecast calls for rain over the next few days. And that's what's trending. I'm Aaron Lanuza. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at cougarnews.com. 
One family decided to pay it forward by organizing a blood drive here in Santa Clarita. Jazz Pete has the latest information. On Thursday, September 10th, the Children's Hospital truck made a 60-mile trek from its home in Los Angeles to James Foster Elementary School. Thanks to 11-year-old Connor Koganauer, CHLA was able to collect 32 units of blood. One unit of blood can help up to three patients. On September 3rd, 2014, Connor was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma a rare bone cancer that primarily affects children and adolescents. From the moment that I met Connor, I just knew he was a special kid, and that he, he had something inside of him that was a little bit different. Um, I recognized him as a, as a leader and somebody that had a job to do. He didn't look at being sick as um, something that was going to define him, but rather something of how he was going to define it and how he was going to move past it. He has now been cancer-free for three months. I know that Children's Hospital is in need of blood most of the time, so we decided to bring a truck over here. Connor and his mom, Christina, plan to organize more blood drives by early next year. We are extremely blessed. We're extremely grateful for the support of the community, of family, of friends, um, because without that, I don't think we would have held it together as much as, as well as we did. Um, the prayers, knowing that people were praying for us and rooting for us, always kept us strong. I'm Jazz Pyatt for Cougar News. Around campus, you may have seen students snoring in the library, getting a quick nap in the honor grove, or even falling asleep in the classroom. Sammy Gebers is here to report how college students can't just get enough shut-eye. It is no secret that college students get less sleep than the recommended 8 to 10 hours. However, many students will describe their college life as a balancing act, and many times busy schedules doesn't leave room for a lot of sleep. I'm taking 15 units, and on average I get like 5 or 6 hours of sleep. Do you think that's enough? No. <laughs> I'm taking 13 units, and I probably only get about six hours of sleep a night. Um, right now, I'm taking nine out nine units, and I'm probably getting like seven hours, maybe less of sleep. Um, on average, I get four hours of sleep a night, and it's definitely not enough. Like last night, I got four hours, and then the night before that, I got one. So it's like definitely not enough. But if I want to pass my classes, then that's what I have to do. Students have many different commitments outside of school, such as work and other recreational activities that makes it difficult to get a healthy amount of shut-eye. Cougars report that they struggle to accomplish it all. I think it's hard to balance, obviously, your schoolwork, plus on top of that, I'm sure everyone right now is working at least a part-time job or they're somehow involved in, in school, so it's kind of hard when you're working to, like, 9, 10, or 11, and then you have to wake up to go to your like 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. class, you know? You keep trying to balance everything, and things get sacrificed, and then you lose sleep over worrying about the things that you should have done. Mm -hmm. It's an endless cycle. I can definitely notice my emotions aren't quite as balanced when I don't get enough sleep, um, and I don't eat as healthily. I honestly think there's just not enough time in the day. I think that balancing school and work is definitely the hardest in trying to find hours that you're not working to do homework or sacrificing hours of sleep in order to do homework and do more studying. I think that's the hardest thing for college students. Sleep deprivation can lead to stress, illness, lack of judgment, obesity, and safety concerns such as dangerous driving habits. If you feel that you're having trouble sleeping or need help figuring how to get enough shut-eye, try visiting COC Student Health and Wellness Center to ask a question or pick up a pamphlet. I'm Simi Gebers reporting for Cougar News. Despite triple-digit weather, most residents are doing a good job at conserving water during the drought. Kimberly Pressler has more on how well the Santa Clarita Valley is doing. It's been several months since Governor Brown imposed unprecedented restrictions on Californians' water use. And nowadays, it seems like water conservation is the new normal. In the month of July, California reduced water use by 31.3 percent, saving 74.6 billion gallons of water. So how has the Santa Clarita Valley done? Well, to date, Valencia Water Company customers are doing their part. 
Since June, uh, when the compliance reporting period started, our customers have surpassed their 24% targets. Customers understand the importance of the drought and they've taken action to save water. In fact, the Valencia Water Company reports a staggering 35.9% water reduction last month. Newhall County Water District also surpassed their imposed restriction of 28% by cutting back 30%. And Santa Clarita Water Division reports their residents decreased use by 34 percent, exceeding their mandated 32 percent. The average resident continues to use about 98 gallons per day, but that's still a big drop from last year. I try to save on water, taking shorter showers, doing my laundry after 6 p.m. The latest report from the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center says there's a 95% chance of a strong El Nino climate pattern that'll hit the West Coast in the winter months, bringing along with it upwards of 15 inches of much needed rain to California. With this new information, the big question is, will everyone continue to conserve? Whether El Nino hits or not, we still have a lot of water to save. We can't plan our conservation activities today based off of a promise of water in the future. For Cougar News, I'm Kimberly Pressler. Coming up on Cougar News, find out how humor and helping local kids go hand in hand. Plus, Santa Clarita pays tribute to a dark day in U.S. history. Stay tuned. Are you still looking for your school? College of the Canyons is located on scenic rolling hills with competitive programs such as new media journalism, state-of-the-art sports facilities, and a culinary arts program that will be opening their brand new building with three state-of-the-art test kitchens. At only $46 a unit, you will discover that COC is the community college for you. Find out more at www.canyons.edu. I'm Richard Horvitz. I'm Tara Strong. I'm Michael C. Morona. And I'm Danny Tamarelli. Hi, this is Ming Chen. This is Mike Zapsik. Hi, it's Louie Anderson. I'm Rudell. I'm Florence Henderson. I'm the Grinch. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. And uh, you're watching. And you lucky people are watching. Cougar News. Cougar, Cougar news. news. Cougar News. Cougar News. Cougar News. Cougar News. You're watching Cougar News. So this is for the older ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a cougar. A tribute last Friday night saluted the brave men and women of 9-11. Brooke Lohman and Sammy Giebers have more. People from around the Santa Clarita area gathered to support the heroes of 9-11. This tragic day still affects our country in the present. On Friday, people came together at the Westfield Mall Center to honor and support heroes that helped our nation on that day. Well, this right here is donations that were brought on by local elementary schools in the, in the area, everywhere from Canyon Country to Saugus to Valencia, and this is the family members, the kids, uh, their PTAs, and the teachers and staff that donated all these goodies for military servicemen overseas and women. Um, first and foremost, the ones from our community. So they'll be packaged up tomorrow and then sent via U.S. Postal Service to our military personnel. So we're very grateful for all the donations that were given. Volunteers have done a lot to support first responders and troops, but this event isn't just about volunteering. It's about remembering 9-11, sharing memories, and communicating the impact of the tragic day. So 9-11 obviously was a tragedy and I think it's brought the United States together as far as embracing what we have here in our country. Um, I know we have three small children, two six-year-olds and an eight-year-old and they're learning in school, you know, what it means to be uh, an American and live in the United States and they learned, you know, just recently about what 9-11 was and what it meant and what happened and they asked questions on you know, are we safe and, you know, is it okay to live here and are people going to hurt us? And I think it just makes people 
stand back and really realize that we are a great country. Uh, we're a great nation that's come together. 9-11 was a tragedy, but it's really brought America together and it's taught our children really to appreciate where we live and what we're gonna do in the future. Yes, I do get emotional. I think it's one of those things that, you know, Amer America has never been struck on its own soil. And so the fact that we are that susceptible to that, and we can always be susceptible to that, uh, we need to remember. And we need to remember to keep our guard up and to uh, keep protecting our, our land and our people. As President Barack Obama said, even the smallest act of service, the simplest act of kindness, is a way to honor those we lost a way to reclaim the spirit of unity that followed 9-11. I'm Sammy Gebers, reporting for Cougar News. Hands-on SCV put on their annual day of service in order to give a makeover to a few local community buildings. Austin Westfall brought us this report. Hundreds of volunteers turned out to garden, paint, and clean up local nonprofit and city sites for Hands-on Santa Clarita's 9-11 day of service on Saturday. Those who showed up cleaned and painted the Boys and Girls Club in Newhall, filled military care packages at the American Legion, trimmed trees, painted, and reorganized the Domestic Violence Center of Santa Clarita, and painted and generally cleaned the ranch at SRD Straightening Reins. We had a huge group come out in addition to our regular ranch volunteers and just help with some of the maintenance that we don't have time to do because we're busy providing the services for kids. As you can see here, we have donated and put together almost 200 boxes for military personnel overseas. Hands-on Santa Clarita provides support and resources in order to connect local nonprofit organizations with volunteers, groups, and businesses in order to meet the community's needs. I am so proud of the community for giving back in the way that they do. The amount of work that they did in four hours with probably 300 and some volunteers is huge and I know the nonprofits are extremely grateful for projects um, being completed. It's nice to be able to uh, live in a community that uh, easily and readily gives back so much. To find local volunteer opportunities, visit Hands-On Santa Clarita online at handsonscv.org. A new internship program is steering students in the right direction. College of the Canyons partnered with the Los Angeles Police Department's Motor Transport Division to give auto technology students this rare opportunity. Kelly Johnstone has more. With a fleet made up of over 5,000 vehicles, the Motor Transport Division is a vital part of the Los Angeles Police Department and a major presence on the roads. From potholes to pursuits, these cars require a lot of maintenance. Through a new internship program, auto technology students at College of the Canyons have the chance to explore a career working for the LAPD. It's the, really the only program where a community college is partnered with a major police department in the whole United States. Out of 21 applicants, only four students were selected to participate in the 60-hour internship, which began in June. Kimberly Knight says it opened up a whole new world of job opportunity. It showed us all the different entities that need mechanics or mechanic people other than just personal garages. Interns worked alongside LAPD technicians assessing drivability problems and doing bumper to bumper maintenance. The director of police transportation, George Yamanaka, says the experience went beyond technology. A lot of them uh, got to see what the LAPD is really about. It's not just about fixing cars. It's a whole culture that we have here. I wouldn't say it's a lifestyle, but it's a job. It's a career, you know, and uh, the officers embrace it. The LAPD is seeking 15 new technicians. Only those who pass the equipment mechanics test will be considered. Well, you can earn a living wage and can raise a family on it. You can take care of yourself. You can be independent if you work for, um, you know, an organization like um, LAPD. Kimberly Knight plans to take the LA City test next year. It's actually really calm and really like family oriented and everyone's there to help everyone and it's just nice. And then you're like, this is why I wanted to go in this field. We'd like to mention that former intern Mike Van Lamsord will take the LA City Equipment Technicians test this weekend. Good luck, Mike. And for more information on the LAPD Motor Transport Division internship, you can check out the My Jobs portal on the College of the Canyons website. So Ariel, it seems like there's a lot going on at the Performing Arts Center. Could you tell us what's been happening? I'll tell you what happened. A local nonprofit organization is raising money to help at-risk teens. Georgia Rios has more. 
Tonight marks the fourth annual Comics for the Cause charity event, which will raise money for the Santa Clarita Youth Project. The event brings together many well-known comics for a night of laughter and donations. So the SCV Youth Project is on all the high school and middle school campuses here in Santa Clarita. We go on campus to serve all the students that may be dealing with issues in life. Anything from sexuality to drugs to scholastic grades, whatever's troubling them, we want to be a resource to help them get their lives set back on track. So we do all sorts of counseling, everything from one-on-one -on -one counseling to group therapy sessions so that we can help educate them on making smart choices and try to empower them to get their lives back on track to where they want to be. So that's what we do. Uh, you know, I, I, would, I would have helped her for anything, but especially when she described what a great uh, organization she's created where, you, you know, this, this uh, Santa Clarita Youth Project reaches out to at-risk youth and gives them free counseling at all the schools. and. You know, that, that, that people don't realize it, but all someone sometimes needs is someone to talk to and it can totally change their life. And so I realized that this is important work and, and any way I could help, I was very, very pleased to do it. Being founded in 2000, the Santa Clarita Valley Youth Project now helps over 25,000 students throughout the valley. The classic rock group Kansas played a concert at COC over the weekend. Cody Taylor has more. The band Kansas has been an extremely popular name in music since the early 1970s. They have spent over 200 weeks on the Billboard Top Charts and have had eight gold albums and three sextuple platinum albums. On September 12th, they performed a sold-out show at Santa Clarita's own College of the Canyons. This has been Cody Taylor with Kugo News. A TV classic celebrates a big milestone this week. The longest running no. Western television show, Blend and Smoke, will be celebrating their 60th anniversary at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City this Friday. The Santa Clarita Valley was home to Gunsmoke for the first six seasons of the show. The majority of the episodes were filmed at the Santa Clarita's very own Melody Ranch. Fans can celebrate with the cast and purchase tickets on the Gunsmoke 60th Anniversary website. For more information, you can check out cougarnews.com. The most famous puppets are back in action. ABC Family will be launching a new Muppets reality TV show starting September 22nd. Kermit the Frog tries to be an executive producer of the show within the show, Up Late with Miss Piggy. Cameras will go behind the scenes taking an office-style documentary look at the professional lives of Miss Piggy, Kermit the Frog, and the rest of the Muppet gang. The show will leave the audience cracking up, so be sure not to miss it. It looks like that's definitely going to be entertaining. And I heard Miss Piggy and Kermit broke up as well. Yeah, it's going to cause a lot of drama. I'm excited. Well, thank you so much. There will be less headaches for travelers in the Golden Valley area. Construction crews are widening the bridge by adding more lanes. The $11 million project will ease congestion by adding two lanes on each side. Although progress has been made, the project will not be done for another year. Even though it looks like, hey, looks like you're through, it'll still be next summer. Uh, hopefully, in my, in my opinion, uh, June, if I had to give a month, but I surely don't have a date. Just this last weekend, Santa Clarita's Route 66 Classic Car Show exhibited history showing cars from 1975 and older. Aaron Lanuza was there to see the show. Just along Soledad Canyon Road Saturday evening in the Route 66 parking lot, car fans came together for the last classic car show of their six-show series before the best of the best face off on October 10th. 
over 80 cars were displayed for all to see, with cars ranging from the early Chevy Impala to the Ford Model T Coupe. The show featured cars of young enthusiasts to some with a very unique taste. During the war, they called them quarter-ton trucks. I've won the competition three different times. Usually, it'll win in the special interest uh, category. It's a great car show, lots of beautiful cars. Just enjoyed small talk and good music until car owners were awarded trophies in multiple categories, including Best Ford and Best Muscle. The Best of Show was awarded to Olive and Charles Strauss for their 1971 Ford Torino. They are now qualified for the last classic car show in October to win the Big Route 66 Grill Trophy. Still to come on Cougar News, COC football is on quite the roll. Also, find out why Santa Clarita may be up for a prestigious award. Hey, this is T-Boz of TLC. This is Batman. I'm Michael C. Morona. And I'm Danny Tamarelli. Hi, this is Ming Chen. This is Mike Zapsik. Hi, it's Louie Anderson. I'm Weird Al. I'm Florence Henderson. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And uh, you're watching. And you lucky people are watching. Cougar. Cougar news. Yeah. Cougar, Cougar news. Cougar news. Cougar news. Cougar news. Cougar news. You're watching Cougar news. And I'm a cougar. Stay tuned. Habitat for Heroes. Really, it's a story about people. Letting people see that they're not alone, they're not isolated. We're here to help, and we need to work on behalf of our veterans. Then we can really change that veteran's ability to reintegrate into the community. Habitat for Heroes is not just rebuilding homes, but it's rebuilding lives. And that's the message we want to get across. Get involved. Visit HabitatSCV.org and find out how you can help. Santa Clarita has been on a business boom the past few years, so it is no wonder that SCV was named as a finalist for LA County's most business-friendly city. Here is Jake Barabas with the full story. Santa Clarita was founded in 1987 as the union of seven pre-existing communities, and this small town has grown to become the 24th largest in California, and in 2015 was voted as a finalist for Los Angeles County's most business-friendly city. Being a finalist for Los Angeles County's most business-friendly city is nothing new for Santa Clarita. In fact, they've been a finalist a few times in the past. I sat down with Jason Crawford, manager of economic development and marketing in Santa Clarita, for more information. Community benefits because the city is pro-business. We, uh, we're business-friendly. We feel like we're on the same team. We want to accomplish things that are good for the business community, and then they're good for the overall community. They're good for the city. So um, our continuing to walk that walk, I think, definitely helps. We do a survey of our residents every year and ask them, you know, what sorts of stores or restaurants would you like to see here? What do you leave Santa Clarita to go uh, shop or, or eat at? Uh, and some of the things we hear back over and over again are, we want more mom and pop businesses. We want more mom and pop restaurants. We want an independent art house movie theater. They're, they're looking for those sorts of opportunities. Uh, we feel like we're on the same team. So we, we serve our customers, and our customers are our residents, and they're our businesses. And so we, we feel like we're on the same team looking to do what is the best thing for the community. And sometimes that's how we help a resident, and sometimes that's how we help a business. With a team of city workers and city council members who are all on the same page like that, it's no wonder why Santa Clarita has received all of the accolades that it has. This has been Jake Barabas reporting for Cougar News. So Sean, COC football team had had quite a weekend. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Be happy to, yeah. They, uh, the COC football team is definitely on a roll. We're uh, going to go look at some of their highlights now. The uh, COC football team was looking to build on their huge victory on the road against the state's number one as well as the country's number two team, the Mount Sac Mounties, last week. The Cougars took on the Citrus Owls in the 2015 home opener at Cougar Stadium. Out to the stadium we go. The captains go out to uh, the center of the field to shake hands. I love watching that. 
And off we go to the action. First quarter, quarterback Brian Mad of the Citrus Owls throws a nifty little nine-yard touchdown pass to the back of the end zone. And the Owls lead 7-0. They would go on to take a 10-0 lead out of the first quarter. Second quarter action, near the end of the half, actually, Brian Mayett, feeling the pressure, scrambles out of the pocket, gets stripped by Garrett Updegraff. The ball is picked up by Tristan Brown, and off he goes, down the sidelines. We're talking 89 yards down into the end zone for a Cougar touchdown. That would give them a 14-10 lead, and they would take that lead into the half. We would hear from Tristan Brown later on in the game in a big way when the Cougars needed him. In the meantime, Lugers, Cougars led by 14 when Brian Mayett led them on an impressive 75-yard drive back, featuring this catch by Aaron Simpson. Simpson goes into the end zone there, as you can see, but uh, he fell just a little bit short on the one-yard line. On the, in the next play, the Owls would punch it in from one yard out, and it would make it a seven-point lead with four minutes to play. However, the ensuing kickoff, there's that man again, Tristan Brown, Shaking one, two, three tackles, and off he goes. You're not going to catch him. 98 yards down into the end zone for a Cougar touchdown, putting the finishing touches on the home opener. The final, the Cougars 33 and the Owls 20. Speaking of Cougar football, alumni Tim White is really making a name for himself as a member of the Arizona State Sun Devils. Over the weekend, Tim and the rest of ASU hosted the Cal Poly Mustangs. Tim had quite an impact on the game. You see him uh, get the ball and take it down the left sideline here. He would scramble for 59 yards, which took the Sun Devils deep into Mustang territory. He's brought down there at about the four-yard line. Big run there, Tim. Two plays later, he's rewarded for his effort as uh, he's thrown a touchdown pass just inside the end zone there. And ASU goes on to beat Cal Poly 35-21. to Nice to see Tim doing so well. Turning to local action, the Valencia Vikings hosted the Chaminade Eagles last Friday at Paul Priest Stadium, but it wasn't looking good for them early on. They trailed twice by as many as 26 points, but Jamar Berkeley was intent on bringing them all the way back. We go to the third quarter. Berkeley picks off this pass, takes it up the far sideline 32 yards for a pick six, and the Vikings trail at this point in the game by just 12 points. He tried to bring them back, and then later on in the fourth quarter, there the, the Viking faithful cheering for that touchdown, and then later on in the fourth quarter, there's that man Berkeley again, spinning off the pile, and off he goes out to the left pylon, sneaks in for a Viking touchdown, cuts the deficit from 26 all the way to five points, but that's as close as they'd come. The Vikings down by Chaminade, 43-38. to Finally, former Canyon High School football great Drew Wolitarski is slowly but surely making a name for himself at the college level. Drew, as some of you may recall, is the all-time high school state leader in both career catches and yardage. And he didn't stop at Canyon High School. He moved on to uh, Minnesota to play for the Golden Gophers. You see him in action there. In this last game that he played, he, he went for nine passes and 114 yards, including a touchdown. And... Uh, Drew helped his team beat Colorado State in overtime, 23-20. to You see him doing his thing there. That's all that guy does is catch passes. So there he is. And that's a look at sports. You know, it's so great to see so many athletes from the Valley making a name nationwide for themselves. Absolutely, yeah. We, uh, you see Tim there and uh, Drew, and I think we're going to see Tristan sooner or later at one of those big schools. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Have a good evening. Me too. Do you ever find yourself out in the dark all alone and wish you had a buddy to walk with? Well, now there is an app for that, and Laura Pickler has more. Whether you're walking to your car after class, studying in a coffee shop, walking home after a long day at work, or simply taking your dog on a walk, there are plenty of situations where you are out by yourself and you don't feel safe. When I'm walking alone, I do always have that concern in my mind, like what if something happens? What if I don't pull out my phone fast enough? That's why five students in Michigan created an app that allows friends to virtually walk you home. The companion app allows users to contact other people to accompany them. Those contacted then follow the user through an interactive map that detects any changes in the user's movement. 
If the users don't confirm that they're safe within 15 seconds, a piercing alarm goes off and you can directly contact the police. Even though the app seems geared towards women, anyone can use it. If it was something like really, really sketchy, somewhere where, oh, I don't know if I'll get home safe, yeah, I'll probably use it. The app has many functions. I actually go on runs sometimes by myself, so I would use it for that too. While the companion app surely is a great tool, it can't replace the authenticity of actually walking with someone. For Cougar News, I'm Laura Pichla. The assassination of John F. Kennedy has many unanswered questions, even 52 years later. Many believe the whole story behind this murder has not been revealed. Professionals have spent countless hours trying to get to the bottom of what really happened. Former COC professor and published author Dr. James Kelleher wrote a novel breaking down unanswered questions. COC reporter Alyssa Dickert takes a closer look. The president now. Friday, in fact, November 22nd, 1963 will always leave a lasting impression on Americans. For those who lived through this tragedy, where were you when JFK was assassinated was a popular topic of conversation. I can clearly remember where I was. And at the time, I was working for the legal department of Sinclair Oil Corporation in New York City. And I was a block away from Rockefeller Center. So when I went out to lunch every day, I'd walk over at the end of lunch and I would look at the teletype machine to see what was going on. And at the very day that I went over there, uh, what I saw coming across the uh, AP, I think it was at the time, was information that shots had been fired at the president's motorcade in Dallas. And the crowds are just there have been many theories behind JFK's assassination, even 52 years later. Former COC professor and published author Dr. Kelleher has done extensive research around this tragic day that changed America forever. What you have is a failed investigation. One that protects politicians, agencies, and national security. And so the end result of it is, I came to the conclusion, Kennedy was expendable. They didn't care if he was killed. That now leaves us with the question, what was the motive? So the mob and Cuba are the motives. The war on crime and Cuba are the motives. After seven years of research, Dr. Kelleher published He Was Expendable that covers many unanswered questions about the assassination. Ultimately, JFK was a beloved president who left a legacy of hope to many Americans. Somebody, he just really was able to capture things greatly. And uh, I remember one of the things that he said, the world will more admire the force of our example rather than an example of our force, which I thought was great, a great quote. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Melissa Dickert. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Sammy Gievers. Remember, you can catch us on the web at cougarnews.com. And I'm George Rios. You can send us all your news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, COC underscore Cougar News. Have a great night, everyone.